so many people at prayer 409 people in here we had 160 on zoom it's crazy for prayer for do you know how people have to pull teeth to get folks to prayer prayer is the that's the least amount of people in the church per function prayer usually and we had so many people here, so many online. It was just a blessing. Yeah. And we prayed about your money. Yeah. So if you missed that, you missed out. Your abilities that God has given you, your giftings, your talents, all the things that you're able to do. We prayed that God bless that. So you can sustain your lifestyle. Amen. That's what God wants to bless. He don't want us praying for money. He wants to bless our abilities. Somebody will, what if I can't do nothing? You better learn how to do something. If you can't do nothing, you're not going to have no money. Amen. I, amen. So we believe God for your abilities and your talents that the right person will come along and offer you money for what you're able to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. How many of you like money? Raise your hand. Amen. I know we in church, but amen. There's nothing wrong with liking money. Amen. But the love of money is the root of all evil. So don't fall in love with money. It's best to allow God to bless your ability so you can fall in love with what you're doing. Yeah. You'll like what you're doing. You'll love what you're doing. And get paid for it too. Yeah. I love preaching the gospel. Amen. And I'm able to provide for my family. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Things you're able to do. Yeah. Amen. You ought to enjoy it. Yeah. And if you don't enjoy it, learn to. Yeah. Amen. Learn to through this season so you can get promoted and start enjoying what you're doing. Amen. Don't be covered in the manager. Love where you are and let God put you there. Don't be trying to take him down so you can replace him. This is just practical stuff. Amen. And I just try to teach practical things. There's no need of me getting up here talking about money every Sunday. I don't even understand churches that do that. That's just don't make any sense for me to keep. Oh, y'all the building fun. Y'all, we got the light bulb out up here. Anybody got $10? Stand up. There's no need of us <laughs> just beating the church up and having $100. Okay, this is everybody with $100 stand. All the $100, everybody with 100 And then go all the way down. Okay, 99 Everybody with 99 <laughs> The stand okay y'all sit down 98 the 98 dollar folks what are you doing all the way down okay five dollars the five dollar folks you wouldn't have to do that if you would teach people the truth about giving it's all in the look at somebody say it's all in the bible yeah and when you're broke it's depressing so you need to learn how to get, amen. Yes, Broke ain't never felt good to nobody. Amen. So you need to ask God to bless your ability. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash the right, look at somebody and say the right way to give. Amen. Now the church is growing, thank God. They're all around the corner. We have to put a new screen up around the corner. For a whole nother section over there. So we thank God that this church is growing. Amen. That's a blessing for them. Amen. But we need the offering to grow too. We don't, wait, let, me, let me rephrase that. We don't need the offering to grow. You need the offering to grow. Amen. You need the offering to grow. See, I just said it's hot. So what are we going to do? We, it's going to be hot. No, there's a remedy for that. Because when the bills are paid, you hit that little box. See, it's a white box right over there on that pole. You get over there and there's some numbers on it. And you can decrease those numbers. <laughs> and something magical happens. 
<laughs> Something magical happens. Y'all, AC is magic. It really is. Something magical that wasn't in the Bible days will happen. <laughs> but, and something else happens. When that meter gets to running, something else happens. Something includes a bill. Amen. So all of this stuff, it, but I don't get up. Y'all know, how often do I talk about money in here? I don't ever talk about money because we have responsible people in here. Amen. But when you get a bunch of new folks, sometimes you just got to let them know, hey, this is what we believe. We believe that as mature believers, we're going to take care of our responsibility. Amen. Amen. Somebody like, well, all these screens are excessive. Well, go home and watch it on TV then. It's not excessive. Everybody in here needs to see. And some folk don't see as good as you. And I need to be able to turn around and read when I feel like it. And them folk around the corner need a screen. All God's children need a screen. <laughs> yeah, we want it to look good. And, and it's not just us. There are thousands and thousands of people that are receiving what is being said. Amen. So it's just that type of ministry. Look at somebody and say, it's just that way. It's just that way. Me and my wife, when we first got married, we were so poor. My daddy found us a TV on the trash, which is where all our stuff. See, my dad was a maintenance man at, a, at some apartments at the time. So uh, we just decorated our house with the stuff folks didn't want. Yeah, uh-huh. We had a dining room table that had the gangster lean. As soon as you set something on it. And so we had to put a nine volt battery. Couldn't be anything but a nine volt battery. Because it was the perfect size and it was hard enough to sustain whatever weight was sat on the table. Had to be a battery. We set that battery under that leg, that table would just, now it's time to eat. Yeah, that's, that's what we had. Well, we had, but our TV, Lord help. Our TV had a remote. And that remote had one button. <laughs> if you wanted the volume up, you had to get up and go turn it up. Because that one button could only do one thing. Change the channels. And it couldn't go backwards. <laughs> chicka -da -chicka -da -chicka -da -chicka. Remember that? That's what my wife used to call it. The chicka -da -chicka -da -chicka -da box. And we just be flipping. Chicka -da -chicka -da -chicka -da. Yeah, and then the VCR we had on top of it, you know, you couldn't set nothing on top of the VCR because that's where you put the disc. I mean, the, the tapes in the top. It was top loading. You hit a button, it just... What, is that a transformer? It just pops up, put the tape in, press it down. Yeah, yeah that's what we had. That was our house, but we loved it. Amen. 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 Yeah, y'all got TVs that you just walk in. Turn on. <laughs> Channel 50. Alexa, turn my TV on, start the coffee, and warm my chair. They don't understand. Amen. You don't know. You don't know. But even then, in my broke stage, I would give. Yes, sir. Amen. I would give. I would give. We would give that for we gave some of that furniture away when people needed it. That's just what we, we did. I believe in the law of reaping and sowing. Amen. Look, and y'all going might feel away when I say this, but I wanted I wanted to be successful in this life. Somebody don't like the way that sound, but I wanted to be successful. And you know what success was for me? Yeah. Give it. Yeah. Because if I give, it will guarantee I always had something. Y'all yeah. 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 talking about degrees and doctorates and I, oh, that's nice. That's good. But the guarantee yeah. to success by God, God's guarantee yeah. is the law of reaping and sowing. Yeah. He said, be not deceived. God is not my, he, nope, this one right here. Last forever. Whatsoever a man soweth, 
that's Shelly also. Amen. Amen. Amen, folks. See, everybody, oh, here you go. You ain't heard me talk a money message in years. I'm about to do it now. The right way to give. Look at somebody and say the right way to give. Yes, this is a money message. This is not for the weak. You got a problem with giving and all that? You're going to be exposed today. Amen. And you know what I've learned? When folks that don't give leave, you don't know they left. <laughs> they wasn't adding anything anyway. You don't even feel it. <laughs> Adamantbeliever.com forward slash the right way to give dot PDF. All right. There are so many money driven preachers and ministries these days. Amen. There are so many. I hate it when TBN and PTL and LTC and THD. I hate it when all these channels came on the word network and all of them. I hated it because if you have satellite access and TV time and all that, you're going to spend a whole lot of time trying to pay for it. It's very expensive. So you're going to have to tax the people to pay your bill. Won't you just plant churches in neighborhoods? Send out evangelists to evangelize. Why you got to be on TV? And then once they on TV, they start metamorphosizing and acting like the Hollywood actors. Face lifts and take this bone on my toe and put it in my nose because my head is kind of sweet. Preaching, looking like the Joker. Face redone, lips all tight. No, everyone lift your hands and just praise the Lord. Brother. Because you worried about... <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Y'all know that's the truth, though. You know it's the truth. That's what TV does. You want to look young forever. You start watching yourself, you want to look young. Look at somebody and say, we get old. Re regular humans. Regular humans. Now, you can pull your face back if you want to. <laughs> Elders say, you look like you're running in the wind. And I'd be wondering, who signed off on that? Like, who, nobody told you before the show that you look. <laughs> Y'all tell me. I got people that'll tell me. The, the operation you just had, it wasn't a success. <laughs> it was a failure. <laughs> I, hope you say, I hope you saved the other face. Because you need to go have that put back on. <laughs> Tell them to put that on immediately. <laughs> but that's why I hated it, because it was just going to bring that whole Hollywood thing. And me and my wife, we've been in the green room and all of that. And I mean, it's Hollywood. Folk drunk, hound drugs, everything, and get out there and preach you crazy. We've been, we been there. So it just, it's, but it comes with, the stardom, the fame, all of that. It just comes with it. And so it created all of these money-driven preachers and ministries where everyone wants to be big and they want God to make them large. And they don't understand, brother, you don't have an anointing for that many people. And that's okay. But why are you walking in the bank getting the loans and stuff for what you planning to happen? Let's go by what has happened before. That's what the bank going to go by. But yeah, because of the widespread preaching of a per perverted form of the prosperity message. And I say perverted form because there is a prosperity message in the Bible. Men have just perverted it. God does not have a problem with you prospering. He don't have a problem with you being successful. He don't have a problem with you driving a nice car and living in a nice house. He don't have a problem. God don't have a problem with that. Right. 
But there is a version of the message that is perverted. And because of that perverted form, it's hard for biblically based giving to even be promoted. Now everyone is leaving church. And they feel when they leave church, they're free to not give anymore. Not understanding that there is a law in the earth. I'm not under the law. You under this one. <laughs> Be not deceived. God is not mocked. That's in the New Testament. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. There is nothing wrong with a ministry asking people to give, but the bottom line is they should not have to. Amen. Should not have to. Every service they start the music and they bring the thermometer out and set the thermometer on the side. This is where we are. It's like we ain't made it to the red bubble yet. No, we right here. Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he what? Also reap. The problem here is people don't have authorities over their lives, so they don't have anyone to go to. Most of the churches that you see now, most of them are people that got angry at the church they were at and just started their own church. And an angry man is not going to have authority. He's not going to submit to anybody. He's angry. He left submission. Yeah. And so he's doing, he's making it up as he goes and he has an agenda to blow it up big to show somebody. Amen. So you better be careful where you're going. And this is the beauty of it. God will show you. Just ask him. The problem is you angry too. Angry folks always hook up together, don't they? Hook up together and then fall out. Because they're all angry. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. So, many times we are led to give, but because we have been coerced, primed, pushed, and bullied out of our money, we get frustrated with offering time and the expectations of the ministry we give to. So some of y'all, are tra you, you've been traumatized. Because you got bullied. So now you're like, I'm just going to break God off just a, just a pinch. Because of what happened to you where you were before. And that's fine. We'll take your little pinch. Because it ain't hurting us. It's hurting you. If you ought to be not deceived, God is not mocked for whatsoever. If whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Then a pinch. Can I preach in here? That's okay. Somebody don't like this. They're like, now nah, I'm getting a little uncomfortable. Well, next week you can make a decision. Second Corinthians, you in here now, so you got to hear it. Second Corinthians 9 and 7. Every man according as he has purchased purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly. You need to forgive the folks that hurt you about giving so that you don't give grudgingly. Amen. Forgive them. And then, you know, just say this. I chose to be there, so my bad. Yeah, not grudgingly or of necessity. Don't give out of necessity. For God loveth a what? A cheerful giver. Give cheerfully. Now, if the ministry is blessing you, you you're going to do that, right? Yes, Amen. I don't mind coming and preaching. I'm giving my time to y'all. I'm not asking for anything from this church. I'm giving my time to you because I enjoy preaching, but God is going to bless me for it. Right. Amen. And he's going to bless you in the process with a word. Supporting an effective ministry blesses others and giving to the ministry that blesses you should be automatic. Most people that have an issue with giving were abused, deceived, or misused in the past. This has caused them to look at giving in the wrong light. 1 Corinthians 9, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should what? Live of the gospel. 
Most people that have an issue with giving, though, it was because of those kinds of things. It was abuse. Somebody was coming in there. Now, if a person is just rich and they want a jet, I have no problem with that, Elder. Get you a jet. But if you're always talking about money and making the folks pay for it, that's when I got a problem. Amen? If you rich, man, go buy 10 jets. But don't tax and hurt people to get it. Amen. That's when it becomes excessive. Amen. But we're supposed to live of the gospel. There's nothing wrong with that. You ought to want your pastor to live of the gospel. You ought to want your pastor to do well for preaching to you. Somebody not clapping. They got them old skeleton hands. I don't want him to do well. Why not? When we give, we will receive. Y'all believe that? When we give, we will. Look at somebody say, when you give, you will receive. That's a law. If we were blessed by what we receive from the ministry, then just imagine the blessing that comes from giving to it. Amen. Acts 20 and 35. I have showed you all things. How that so laboring ye are to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord. How he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So you're blessed by receiving, but you get a bigger blessing by giving into what you received. Amen. When we give as the spirit leads us, we will be very blessed because we are being obedient to him and not man. I believe that we are free from the tithing command. Okay, somebody about to wait a minute. No, I'm not telling you not to tithe. Let me explain. The tithe, is, it just means 10%. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's all it means. And if you need a, a, an amount to give, cons, to give consistently, it's good to give a tithe. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah, it's good to start at a 10. Whatever that number is, it may be more than 10. But give consistently instead of just thinking about it each time I think I'm going to give this, I think I'm going to give that then your life will be like that your income will be like that but if you give consistently why we give consistently? because we have consistent lights our air has been consistent is our air condition consistent? amen these screens have been consistent the speakers this microphone consistent amen parking lot consistent yeah the swap consistent some of y'all dressed your whole family from the swap ain't gonna break God off something you got $200 shoes on from the swap yeah so I don't preach tithing as mandatory I just preach it as a good idea. Yes. Amen. I'll keep going. Somebody that just rocked their world. I believe that we are free from the tithing command, but instead are commanded by the Holy Spirit in regards to giving. Yeah. The religious system once used rituals that dictated mankind's sanctification. But with the spirit in control of our lives, we are free to receive instructions from him. Our liberty is not a license to overlook the command to obey the spirit. We, so we are not at liberty to do what we please. The responsibility to sacrificially give cannot be overlooked. Amen. You're responsible for this ministry. You're responsible for what you receive. You're responsible for the comfort level in here. The coziness. Cozy cost. We didn't have no roof on this building. It wouldn't be as cozy. We didn't have that AC. It just wouldn't be as cozy. We had folk bringing blankets in here and going to sleep because it felt better than their own house. <laughs> Malachi 3 and 10. Now, this is the command of tithing in the Old Testament. We know we're not under the law, but this is how God felt so we can glean from how he felt. He told them... Bring ye all the tithes, or 10%, into the storehouse, 
that there might be meat in my house. 10% of what you've grown, 10% of your cattle and all of those things. So there might be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you a window, uh, open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I was sitting with an old preacher, Apostle Lobius Murray, and I was broke. He could see it on me. And he told me, he said, brother, he said, you got to believe in the law of giving and receiving. I said, well, I just don't want to get caught up in all the foolishness and this and that. And that. He said, but don't you want more than enough? I said, what do you mean? He said, more than enough. He said, trust God with your giving, and he'll do Malachi 3 and 10. I said, but that's the old law. He said, but it's still God. I said, huh, you might be on to something. Now, to just let you know, I was talking to a man that owns, I mean, thousands of acres in a whole nother city, houses all behind the church, a whole neighborhood. When he died, George Bush fold, sent an American flag folded up and put it on his coffin. So we ain't talking about jack legness. We're talking somebody that actually had it all. And he was teaching me, brother, this is a principle you, ca you can't forget. Let me put this in you before I pass away. Learn to trust God with your giving. Yeah. He gave me that, and then he gave me entrance in his church to shoot the truth behind hip-hop. You don't think that man blessed me? I didn't even want to shoot that elder. I told him, I don't want to shoot this video. He said, well, you can't go every place. And there was no social media at the time, but he said, you can't be everywhere. God want this message out. I said, yeah, but if I shoot it, that's them cameras, and then I'm get the facelift, and I, you know, I'm just, y'all, I'm crazy. <laughs> I was crazy, but I didn't have any leadership or headship to teach me those things. So he came and taught me, no, brother, this is how you need to do this. You need to shoot this video in this church and trust God with your giving, and you won't be this broke forever. Amen. And he knew I was broke because they asked me what I was going to wear and I didn't have no clothes. They said, what, are, what you going to wear on the video? I said, this? I said, no, nah, brother. They took me and had clothes made for me. Took me, got my hair cut. Remember that, baby? They took care of me. It's like, brother, you're going to make a video. You, you got to have some wide leg slacks on. <laughs> that, was, that was the end thing back then. Y'all, see, y'all too young. Y'all like all that old tight gay looking stuff. I had them wide and they said, you gonna be walking across the floor. You gotta, you gotta be almost making a sound. So folks are no God is speaking. Man, Pastor Murray and Herman Murray and all that, man, I love them folks for what they did for me. But it wasn't just the videos and all that. He taught me a principle and put it in me. And it's been working in me ever since. So I'm trying to look at somebody and say, he's just trying to help you. I'm trying to put it in you. That's why we have the swap. The swap is a blessing. You're able to give of your good stuff to somebody else. God said, bring ye all the tithe in the storehouse. He said, I will open the window. I need the windows open. Yeah. Now, you can keep the windows closed around where you live. I need the windows open. Yeah. Some stuff I don't even want to pray for. I just want to reach through the window and get it. Yeah. Where you get that? I got that out the open window. The window was open. Many preachers twist this scripture, though, to mean that God will tell the preacher what you should give. And if you obey him, 
then you will be blessed. That's not true. That's against it being purposed in your heart. So I can't get up here and tell you what to give. Oh, God said $33.33. cents. Give that. How do you give that? $33.33? Is that givable? Oh, God is saying, huh? 33,000. Let someone stand with that. And don't nobody stand. Everybody looking like, bruh. Take a couple of zeros off. Let's move this thing along. Yeah, God is not doing that. That's magic. You're a magician. Foolishness. And the only reason people do it is because they saw somebody else do it. The visiting, the visiting evangelist came down and started telling everybody that they was going to be rich. And, oh, I see you're going to be real. God is going to, and all that. And then everybody want to give into that because that's the rich message. No, 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 no. The preachers, no, God is not telling them. God said he'll tell you. Purpose it in your heart. Preacher don't know your income. He ain't seen your bills. Like, now how he know how much I'm supposed to give and he ain't seen my savings account? <laughs> Just trust him. Just trust him with it. That's too much. That's too much to trust him with. Look, somebody looking at me like I just blasphemed. No, 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 no. That's too much. Sometimes it's too much. Ask your wallet. Your wallet will go to prophesying and speaking in tongues. Your wallet just start flapping. Just. Purse just start going. Oh. Oh. Purse trying to preach. You can't give in this line. Not this line. Wait on another line. This line is too. No, you can't. You can't afford to give that. Do you know sometimes you can't afford to give stuff? Oh, this is going against, this is making somebody's tongue itch. Sometimes you can't do it. I don't care who said God said. You ain't read your bank statement. Amen. What he purposed on your heart. Now we give by faith, but we don't give by crazy. Amen. Sometimes it's crazy. I remember one time this preacher said, I need everybody in the building, everybody to give $250. God said, everybody give. So this one dude said, well, this is my paycheck, and it's for $250. He said, that's all I can give. So he went up there, he said, this is all I can give, but it's my paycheck. Everybody just, he, he gave it, everybody started shouting, hey, hey, look at this man, look at the faith, whatever, whatever. Service about to end. <sighs> Uh, brother, why are you coming up here to the pulpit? I think I'm going to need that check back. <laughs> what, what, what did y'all do with the money? What, what y'all do with it? Y'all still got it? I think I need my check back. <laughs> was you there? Who was there when that happened? No? <laughs> yeah, that happened for real. He got excited and caught up in the music. <laughs> I mean, he walked up and leaned on the pulpit. You got another testimony? Nah. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> nah. <laughs> you got another testimony? God did something else? Nah. I need my check back. I know y'all tired, y'all shouted, y'all sweating, everything. But I need my check back. <laughs> Yeah, so we don't do people like that. He couldn't afford to give. If your whole check is 250, God ain't trying to get your whole check. Can I just be real in here, y'all? I'm gonna preach a real gospel in here. Some of this stuff is foolishness, fleecing sheep. Amen. That is not what God said, and there is no biblical example of the preacher telling people to give a certain amount. God will purpose in your heart. What to give through your relationship with him. 
Although offering time may be set aside so you can do just that, the intention is to allow God to lead you. Proverbs 11 and 24. One gives freely yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, one gives freely as the spirit tells him and he grows all the richer. But another withholds what he should give. That means the spirit told him to give it. He withheld it. He only suffers want. Can I keep preaching in here? We must not throw the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to giving. Just because preachers or churches aren't begging, continuously asking or forcing you to give doesn't mean that you shouldn't give. Amen. Amen. Because I don't talk about it in here. I don't talk about it because I trust that if you have a relationship with the Lord, he's going to tell you what to give. If we desire to have church in buildings with bills, it's not fair for a few people to carry the financial load. While others decide they don't want to give anything. We have a spiritual responsibility to spread the gospel and we have a financial responsibility to support the ministry that feeds us so it can continue. Amen. Matthew 6 and 21. For where your treasure is, that will your heart be also. So I'm not talking about you if you don't want to give because I already know where your heart is. Your treasure's in something else. So you're here, but you're not really here. And you won't be missed when you leave because you ain't, you ain't bringing nothing to the table. Though we are not under the law of being cursed for not giving, we are still blessed for giving. That's why I don't understand. Why are you arguing about the law, about tithing, and I don't have to be under the law when you're still under the law of reaping and sowing? Will you be blessed if you give? Yes. Why would anyone not want to bless God's church or the ministry that is feeding them? How can it continue if the people of God do not support it? You will not be cursed for not giving, but you will miss out on the blessing that comes with giving. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. But this I say, he which soweth or giveth sparingly is going to reap sparingly. So he that gives a little bit is going to reap a little bit. But he which soweth bountifully or a lot, he's going to reap also a lot or bountifully. Is that not the Bible? We cannot assume that God is going to do it without our money. Oh, God don't need my money. God is going to do it by purposing upon his people's heart what to give and who to give it to. It's a privilege to be used of God to support his work. Amen. When you are blessed by the word, you should want to give. An open hand can receive more, but a closed hand can only keep what they have. Luke 6 and 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure you give, with all shall it be measured to you again. Have I not just read scriptures in here? Summary! The word will preach whether you like it or not. It's the word anyhow. Many churches have high dollar budgets that they are trying to meet. Now we don't have a high dollar budget in here so we do right by your money but if we did have a high dollar budget and you decided to be here then give you like high budget things if you decide to be a member there and enjoy the benefits you should give if you do not like the things the ministry does why are you there if you disagree with the direction of a ministry you should leave and go support a ministry that's doing what is right to you when we give to ministries that are doing the fool and not feeding us spiritually, then we are cheating ourselves out of our own spiritual blessings. So the law of, listen, the law of giving is still going to work. You give to a corrupt or crazy ministry and still be blessed. But you're cheating yourself spiritually. Sure, when you give, you're blessed, but what about your soul? 
God said he wants you to prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. Your first priority should always be your spirit man. However, we need jobs, promotions, or other monetary things. Many times God is pressing us to give more to make room for more. Yeah. I can honestly say every swap, I have more to give each swap. It just start piling up. I have more to give because I keep giving. I keep making room for more. When we are stingy. Oh, no, no, let me back up. When we decide to hold on to our money instead of giving it, we cripple ourselves financially. When we are stingy with our giving, we make it even harder on ourselves. God's ministry is going to continue with or without your money. And with or without you being blessed. Look at somebody say, you can't stop anything. Man, some folk learn the hard way. You can't stop what God is doing. But you should want to give consistently. So that the hand of God can bless you consistently. This does not mean that we can give ourselves out of debt. Or give ourselves out of sickness. Or give our child out of jail. Man, why do they teach that stuff? Oh, I'm waiting if you can give a $17.17 offering. Somebody's son is going to be released from prison. First of all, what did he do? I think he did more than $17 worth of... He sold more than $17 worth of drugs. Yeah, they teach that. Oh, just give. Come on, just give. Give, just, just, just. And this is the stupid one. Aim your seed. Aim it. Aim your seed. Okay, bring your seed and aim it at that situation. Foolishness. Aim it at that situation. Whatever's going on, you want a husband. You want a husband. Bring your seed and aim it and you go throw it at some dude. (laughs) Wait a minute. <laughs> I said aim it, not throw it. But I see one. I see one. Let me aim it at him. Crazy. That's some foolishness. You can't aim no seed. The seed is already aimed. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's specific. Whatsoever. You go plant oranges, you're not going to grow bananas. Because you planted oranges. Because what you sowed, that's what you're going to reap. So we ain't aiming no seed. And, ooh, that's some dumb stuff. They, they say stupid stuff. And people get so happy and excited. I know you want him out of jail, but he shouldn't have done it. How about that? Amen. And you let God bring you a husband. You don't want to give to get a husband. No. So this does not mean we can give us. You can't give yourself out of debt either. Oh, Lord. Well, let me let me let me retract that. Yes, you can. You can give yourself out of debt by taking the money and paying on the debt. And keep giving to the debtor. You keep giving to the debtor, you'll give yourself out of debt. <laughs> you giving it to the church and trying to let it. <laughs> no, nah, brother, you can take that money to the, up to the bank. That's who you owe. Amen. You can't give yourself out of debt and you can't give yourself out of sickness either. Anybody sick? Oh, just give me just, 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 uh, it's five dollars and five. Five cents for any sickness. Five dollars and five cent line right here. No matter what is ailing you. Y'all heard that before. It's foolishness, man. You lying in the church. I be wanting to stand up sometime. I remember I was at one church, me and my wife, we was at one church, and the dude got up with that 33 and a third and all that, and I was sitting in the back, but he could see me. I was sitting in the back looking at him like, He didn't want to look. He just preached. Yes. Yeah. 
because I was on the next night. So I was just looking at him like, cut all that line. Can't, no, no, that's not how money works. But listen to this, though. This does not mean you can give yourself out of debt or give yourself out of a sickness. Yet it could mean that we can pay for things without getting into debt and not get sick because we worry the stress over our finances. God does not force giving, and neither should the church. The law of giving is true, and if you give to bless the work of God's ministry, then you will be what? Blessed. Blessed. Proverbs 3 and 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. Somebody will see that's back. When the, when the, well, the rest of Proverbs, do you believe any of Proverbs? Yeah, he said, honor the Lord with thy substance. That's not just an Old Testament thing. He wants you to honor him with your substance now. Yeah. Amen. He wants credit for everything you have. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boy, let's stop this. <laughs> Looking for a loophole to not give. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. Now I don't have no barn, but I'm taking this principle to mean bank. I'm changing just by three letters. So that my bank shall be filled with plenty and the presses shall burst out with new wine. I want these kinds of blessings. So I'm going to honor God with my substance. No, I don't have any first fruits as far as fruits and vegetables, but I do have money I can honor him with. I got stuff to give away I can honor him with. Everyone stand to your feet. You know, people just want to cancel the word out because they got hurt by somebody. And then they end up canceling their blessing out because they lost the law of giving and receiving. And I want to break that off of you. If that's on you, if you've been struggling with that because of where you came from, somebody taught you some bull jive. And you're like, man, I just I want to be free to give. I don't want this stuff on my mind. I don't want this stuff in my life. anymore. just come on up. We're going to trust God. Get this off me. I want to be free to give. I want to feel good about giving. I, I, I don't want to even hear that old stuff that you, that they, where they used to take advantage of me and different things. I don't want to look at it like that. I want to be a better. And some of you just, Lord, help me be a better giver. Just come on up. We're going to pray. I want to, I want to just give better. I want to give consistently. Lord, I want to be able to give the same thing every week consistently because I want to be blessed I want my business blessed I want my home blessed I want my job blessed amen I want my children blessed I want a blessing Lord hallelujah anyone else just come on up this is who I want to be who I want to be I want to be worried about it when I give it I don't want to worry about it when I give it I want to just give it Lord, help me have that mentality. Help me feel that way about giving to your ministry. And y'all know me well enough to know I ain't taking advantage of nobody in here financially. That ain't what we do here. I'm helping you. This is helping you. Anyone else? Just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the truth of this message. We thank you, Father God, for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, for your law of giving and receiving, sowing and reaping. We thank you, Father God, for all that your word has to say on this. And Father, right now, we just repent. If we haven't been giving consistently, if we've been giving as an afterthought, if we've just been making it not a priority, whatever the case, forgive us, Lord, for just treating and handling it that way. May have been trauma from our former ministry or maybe trauma from a minister that, that, that showed us 
the wrong way to do it, how it shouldn't be. And Father, it just messed us up. But Father God, we repent right now of that. We ask that you just forgive us, Lord, for being inconsistent and for not looking at things the right way. We want to be a gift to the body. We want to do our part because you've blessed us. You've given us things, Father God. You've blessed us. You've taken care of us. You've never let us down. So we don't want to let you down. So, Father God, we pray right now that you will press it upon our hearts even the more to give. Father God, and help us, Lord, to release it. Open our hands up. Come on, lift your hands up and open them up. Open our hands like this when it's time to give so we can just release the gift, the offering, the tithe, whatever it is. We can release it to you, God. Not worry about it, not think about it. Just know that it belongs to you. Help us with that attitude, God. Help us, give us a giving heart. Give us a giving disposition. Give us a giving mindset, Father God, so that we don't have to worry at all. But we know we have done what we are responsible for. For all that you've blessed us with, the least we can do is give back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now hug somebody on the way to the seat. Say, you're looking at a giver. You're looking at a cheerful giver. You're looking at a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes it takes some time, you know, just depending on your upbringing and some of y'all new to church and different things, and you're learning this, but this is a principle. Amen. And this is our responsibility. And if you want to be blessed, amen. 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 All right.